Welcome to the second part of 13.3, uh, where we're going to talk a little bit about three very special vectors, t hat, n hat, and b hat. And before we begin, I just want to remind us, we actually are of two things. One, we already know what one of these vectors is. We already know that t hat, the unit tangent vector, uh, for a given uh, vector valued function, r of t, Uh, is equal to r prime over the magnitude of r prime. So we take the velocity vector and we turn it into a unit tangent vector. So we get a nice little vector of length one that points perfectly tangent to the curve. The next thing we're going to need is something we've actually already shown uh, back in 13.2, which is that if we have any vector function, any vector at function at all, I just called it here, you know, b of t, uh, if we know that the magnitude of that vector is constant, then uh, its derivative is actually perpendicular to the original vector. And we, we proved this uh, the other day using uh, dot products, right? So um, if we actually do v dot v, we end up with, well, the magnitude of v squared or c squared. And then we do a, a tricky thing where we take the derivative of both sides with respect to t On the left side, you have to product rule this, so you end up with uh, v dot v prime plus v prime dot v. Um, that's just actually the same thing twice. The dot product is commutative, so we can just write this as 2 uh, v prime dot v. And on the right side, well, it's the derivative of constant. Yeah, it's c squared, but uh, so we get 0. And so we, we can kind of conclude in the end uh, v prime dot v equals zero, uh, or uh, v and v prime are perpendicular to each other. Um, and there's two kind of justifications for this, kind of physical justifications. Uh, you can imagine one way to think about it is that if you are, uh, if your vector has a constant magnitude, you could think about it being stuck uh, on a circle or a sphere. And obviously, if you're stuck on a circle or a sphere, uh, the only way you could move is, you know, along the surface of that sphere. So that's going to be perpendicular. Uh, the other way to think about this is kind of in a more physics-y way, which is to say, well, um, if the magnitude of my vector is constant, that means it's never allowed to change length. So the only way that it can change uh, is by rotating. And... Uh, the only way you can get a vector to rotate without changing its magnitude is to uh, is to change it. You know, clearly the um, whatever vector I'm adding to it has to be perpendicular to it. It can't have a component parallel to the vector. It's just got to uh, it's just got to turn it. It's just got to rotate it. So uh, the derivative can only ever uh, turn the original vector. All right. Armed with that, we have our unit tangent vector, and we're actually just going to come straight out of the gate and define what we're going to call a unit normal vector, n hat. And this unit normal vector uh, is going to be the derivative of our unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of that derivative. There's a couple quick things to note here. Of course, this is called our unit normal vector. Uh, and we have two things we know about the unit normal vector. First of all, uh, that it is guaranteed to be uh, perpendicular to uh, to t hat because again we know t hat has a constant magnitude it's a unit vector and therefore its derivative has to be perpendicular to it um, it's also the case that uh, we know it's important to note by the way that uh, t hat is a unit vector but uh, t hat prime, the derivative of it, uh, may not be. When we take the derivative, we don't necessarily get a unit vector again, which is why we have to divide by its magnitude. Um, if you're wondering what good is this, well, the unit normal vector is always going to be at right angles to the curve. So in this case, you know, I could imagine that it goes off in, uh, I'm just going to pick an arbitrary direction. I could imagine it goes off in this direction and is going to be perfectly perpendicular to t hat uh, in this case. Um, fun fact for physics, it will always point towards the inside of a curve. So if you've got 
um, you know, if you've got a curve like this, T hat will point along the curve and hat will always point towards the inside of the curve. Uh, and we can define one last vector called, uh, this was the normal, called the unit binormal vector, B. And this is just the cross product of T hat and N hat. B hat equals T hat uh, cross N hat. There's our last one. Uh, and this is guaranteed to be a unit vector because you're taking the cross product of two things that are themselves unit vectors uh, and are at right angles. So, you know, magnitude of B is going to be magnitude of or B hat, T hat, magnitude of N hat, sine theta. But T hat and N hat are both one. Uh, and sine theta, well, they're at right angles, so this is also one. Um, so if I use the right-hand rule here, T cross N, in this case, B is going to be pointing, I guess, down. And we'll be at right angles to both of these. Now, uh, why do we care about, about these? Um, well, it turns out that these three vectors, uh, T hat, N hat, and B hat, are always at right angles. And what they do is they actually form a little basis. They form like a little IJK basis that travels along with our uh, curve. That basically, as our curve goes through its different things, uh, this little, uh, these three little vectors kind of follow along the track, always pointing at right angles and giving us a nice little coordinate system. So you can imagine if our path describes, you know, an airplane flying around, I've always got a vector that points directly forward, directly to the side, and directly up or down, I get a little coordinate system that travels along with whatever weird convoluted path that I have. Uh, you can also read in your books, there's a couple other interesting uh, planes you can define with these vectors. For instance, uh, the plane defined by, uh, the plane defined by uh, T and N, which I guess you could also say is the plane with B as its normal vector, uh, is called the osculating plane. Uh, and this is basically the best plane to describe, like, sort of what flat surface the curve appears to be on right now. In any case, let's do a little example here. Let's try to find uh, our, let's try to find these. And we're going to start with our familiar helix. So we'll just do a little example here. R of t equals uh, cosine t i hat plus sine t j hat plus t k hat. So let's do... A little example here. So we're going to need our, our prime of t, which is going to be negative sine t, cosine t, 1. Uh, we'll need our double prime, which will be, um, I guess we don't need our double prime for this example. We don't need our double prime for this example. That's fine. Uh, we do need the magnitude of r prime, uh, which we showed uh, previously is just root two. So you can go ahead and prove that if you like. Uh, so what that does is that makes our unit tangent vector uh, right away. It makes it one over root two uh, times negative sine t cosine t one. I'm gonna keep the one over root two on the outside to help me. Uh, in any case, I can take a derivative of that, t hat prime. Let's keep the 1 over root 2 out here. Uh, so I end up with negative cosine t, negative sine t, uh, 0. Uh, and this is actually no longer a unit vector. Uh, if I look for the magnitude of, uh, of t hat prime, uh, what I actually find is that, well, I'm going to get 1 over root 2, a cosine squared, and a sine squared, which make 1. So uh, a little bit of work, you'll find uh, that the magnitude of this is, in fact, not 1. It's 1 over root 2. Um, so in order to find uh, n hat, which is t, t prime divided by t prime, I think you'll find that, in fact, that 1 over root 2 will go away, and that our n hat is just... Uh, negative cosine t, sine t. 
uh, negative cosine t, excuse me, negative sine t is zero. Um, and now to find b, I've got to go ahead and take b hat. I got to go ahead and take my cross product. I j k. And I've got uh, one over root, well, negative one over root two sine, one over root two cosine, one over root two negative cosine, negative sine, zero. So again, just kind of working this out real quick, uh, I get uh, one over root two sine minus j hat uh, boop, boop. Um, 1 over root 2 cosine t plus k hat. Uh, and in this case, I'll get 1 over root 2 sine squared plus 1 over root 2 cosine squared. Uh, and so my final vector is, uh, I'm going to pull out a 1 over root 2, and I'm just going to get uh, sine t, negative cosine t. Of course, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So there's my final vector, b, 1 over root 2, sine, negative cosine. Welcome to 13.4, where we're going to try to figure out uh, how to work with acceleration a little bit. This is a, a bit of a divergence into physics, which of course is just fine. So uh, here we've got a space curve, you know, some vector valued function r of t. And at some moment in time, we're going to stop and we're going to look at the acceleration vector. And of course, that acceleration vector we know uh, to be uh, equal to r double prime second derivative. Um, and one of the things that comes up a lot in physics is we often want to not just talk about the whole acceleration vector, we actually want to talk about the two components of the acceleration vector. We want to break it into one component that goes along the curve, the tangential acceleration, uh, and one that is perpendicular to the curve, the normal acceleration. And we're going to, I could just present you with the formulas, but we're actually going to do this uh, all out. We're going to do the whole thing uh, straight out as we go. Um, and it's going to start in kind of a weird place. We're going to consider our unit tangent vector, which is of course r prime over the magnitude of r prime. And I'm going to write it in a slightly different way. I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to write it as the velocity vector, which is of course the same as r prime, uh, divided by v. And in this case, I'm just going to note that we're defining the scalar v uh, to be the magnitude of the vector, that is, uh, this is our speed. Um, so I could also write, you know, my velocity vector as being my speed times the unit tangent vector. I can just rearrange this. Um, and the reason we might want to do this <clears throat> is let's look at our acceleration vector. Let's look at our acceleration vector, which is, of course, the derivative with respect to time of our velocity vector. Now, um, there's two different things that could change. We could change our speed. We could also change uh, the direction of our unit tangent vector. So we do have to product rule this. So what happens here is we get uh, two terms. Uh, we get v prime times the unit tangent vector. Uh, and we get uh, speed, just v, times uh, t hat prime. Now, you may recall, of course, uh, a couple things here. Uh, one is that um, we, can, uh, we, can, we can write t hat prime, right? We know what t hat prime is because uh, t hat prime over its own magnitude is, of course, the unit normal vector. So t hat prime we can write as its own magnitude times the unit normal vector. 
but of course, we also uh, know from our unit on curvature that curvature is the magnitude of uh, t hat prime over the magnitude of r prime. That is over, it is the magnitude of t hat prime over b. I'm going to switch colors here because we're getting a little bit sad. Um, all right. So uh, once again, we can we can now rewrite it this way. Our acceleration vector, that's much better, is uh, v prime t hat plus, all right. Well, I'm going to replace here. I'm going to replace the magnitude of t hat prime uh, with curvature times speed. And I'm also going to put this in here. And what we end up with is that a second term, which is curvature times speed squared times the unit normal vector. And it may not seem like we've done, but we've actually achieved what we wanted because uh, the tangential component of acceleration, well, that's going to be the part that's times t hat. And the normal component is what's going to be times n hat. So we've actually uh, achieved what we wanted, and we've shown that uh, our unit, our, excuse me, the tangential component of our acceleration uh, is the derivative of our speed. That is, it's the derivative of the magnitude of our prime. Uh, and we've also shown that uh, our normal component is kd squared. Now there is uh, a cute thing about k v about about these two that makes some sense from a physical perspective. What is our tangential acceleration doing? Well, it's accelerating us along our velocity vector. It's accelerating us in the direction of our motion. So this tangential one is responsible for making our velocity vector longer or shorter. Uh, this is the component of our velocity that speeds us up or slows us down, that changes our speed. The normal component, on the other hand, is the component that turns us. Um, and you might recall also that we kind of made this relationship with curvature the other day, that curvature is, you can kind of think of it as being the reciprocal of like this idea of a radius of curvature, one over r. And if you take that, you get that this normal acceleration uh, is equal to v squared over r which is a very uh, familiar expression, that centripetal acceleration v squared over r uh, from physics. So that is, in fact, where that comes from. Um, we can, however, do better than this. We like formulas that are nice to calculate. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of tricksy vector math here. And for our tangential component, we're going to say, you know what? I actually want the component. I don't want to have to calculate r prime. I want to, or I don't have to calculate the magnitude of r prime and then take a derivative. That sounds miserable. So instead, I'm going to use a vector projection. I'm going to say, what is the component uh, in the direction of my velocity um, of my acceleration? Uh, and this turns out to be, you know, v dot a. This is just a definition from chapter 12 uh, over the magnitude of my velocity vector. Or put another way, we can calculate it directly by doing r prime dot r double prime uh, all over the magnitude of r prime. Second, uh, for our normal component, we actually don't have to do anything quite so fancy. We can remember that we have a fancy formula for curvature uh, back from 13.3. And so we can actually write, write it this way. Here's our formula for curvature. This is kv squared. So we can write this as uh, the magnitude of r prime cross r double prime all over the magnitude of r prime cubed. There's curvature times, well, what's, what's speed? What's v squared? Well, that's just the magnitude of r prime squared. So we get a little bit of, can of fancy cancellation here. Uh, and we end up with uh, the magnitude of r prime cross r double prime all over the magnitude of r prime. And so we end up with these two nice convenient equations uh, which are in your book. And I, I just really like the symmetry here again um, in that the, the two equations look very similar. It's r prime and r double prime over the magnitude of r prime. 
But one's a dot product because again, uh, that's giving you the component that goes along uh, parallel to r prime, and the other is a cross product because it gives you the the component perpendicular to r prime, which I think is really cute. So let's do a quick example here. Um, Do a quick example here with one that's not broken, um, where we're going to take uh, this little r is uh, going to be t t squared t cubed, a little twisted cubic. And let's go ahead and calculate these things. So we end up with a t. Oh, I guess we should calculate some derivatives first, huh? Uh, I will do that right here r prime is going to be 1, 2t, two 3t three squared. r double prime will be 0, 2, 6t. So the tangential component of our acceleration here will be r prime dot r double prime. So it gives us nothing. 4t plus 18t cubed all over the magnitude of r prime, which is 1 plus 4t squared plus 9t to the fourth. That doesn't really simplify. Uh, if we want to find our normal component, we do have to do a little bit of a cross product. So we'll do r prime cross r double prime. So we get 1, 2t, 3t squared. 0, 2, 6t in here. You can do this cross product yourself as I'm doing it. Uh, we'll get, uh, we should get minus j hat, 6t, uh, plus, and I believe you get just 2k hat. Uh, so our normal component ends up being uh, the magnitude of that. So we get uh, 36t to the fourth plus 36t squared plus four, all over uh, the same thing. And I just want to point out that it's not that these, uh, we've, we haven't done this example because the formulas I'm giving you are particularly insightful to the behavior of this curve, uh, but it does allow you to calculate at any moment in time uh, precisely the two components of, uh, of acceleration. And remember, this is kind of impressive. We've got a curve that's going all through space, and at any moment we can use these formulas just to say, boom, uh, what are the two components of acceleration?